Hello, here is a Lawrence Academy screencast on factoring difficult trinomials. Um, so trinomials can have a bunch of different forms. Here we have a trinomial that has multiple variables. So because we notice that this is x squared, this is y squared, and the middle term has one of each, an x and a y, we're going to treat it just like we would a normal trinomial that would be x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay, so we're going to treat it like that. And all we're going to do is kind of add in the y later. So if we had this sort of quadratic, we would say, okay, what are factors of 3 that add up to 4? So factors of 3 are 3 and 1, or negative 3, negative 1, and we see that 3 and 1 add up. So our answer for this one would be x plus 3 and x plus 1. Now, the only thing we're missing are those y's. So all we have to do is do x plus 3y and x plus 1y. So our answer, x plus 3y and x plus y. We don't write the 1 because um, it's simplest form. Now, we have another example here. So if we look at this problem, we notice that each of these are divisible by 4. So we're going to do the greatest common factor first. So if we factor out a 4, we're left with x squared minus 3xy plus 2y squared. Now again, we can treat it just like a normal one where we have x squared minus 3x plus 2, and we would say factors of 2 that add up to negative 3, which would be negative 2, negative 1. So we would have x minus 2, x minus 1. The only thing we have to take into account is that y again. So we're going to say 4x minus 2y and x minus 1y, or just y. Okay? Our last example, we're going to use foolproof factoring method. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to multiply a and c, so we get negative 12 x squared y squared. Right now we're not going to focus on the variables because we know the variable is going to be x, y. So what we're going to focus on is this negative 12. So what are factors of negative 12? Well, we have negative 3, comma, 4, negative 4, comma, 3, negative 12, comma, 1, negative 1, comma, 12, and negative 6, comma, 2, or negative 2, comma, 6. And we notice that negative 6, 2 is the one that works. So we are going to split our middle term into negative 6xy plus 2xy. So we're doing it just like foolproof. The only difference is we have xy in the middle instead of just an x. And we have x and y in the middle because those were the variables assigned to this problem. Now we say, okay, out of these first two terms, what do we have in common? We have a 3 and an x. We are left with an x minus 2y. Then we say, out of these two, what do we have in common? Well, we have a positive 2 and a y. We are left with x minus 2y. And then we notice that this, this happens to be the same, so we're going to factor that out. And we are left with 3x plus 2y. And that is our answer for this problem. So it's the same method, you just have to think a little bit differently about the variables involved. Another way that you can see different um, trinomials is where you kind of have multiple things squared. So if we look here, we have x plus a squared plus x plus a. Now if I write out the first binomial, x plus a times x plus a, then I have the second one, um, just x plus a there. 
Now, notice that this x plus a and this x plus a are the same. And we have an x plus a and a 1 that is left over. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out the x plus a that we're seeing in both of these. So we're taking that out first. And then what we have left is an x plus a from here and this 1. Okay? And that's our result. That's our answer. So another example here, we are going to rewrite our first x minus 4 and then x minus 4 because we have two of them. And then if I look at the next two terms, they have a greatest common factor of 3. So I'm going to factor out that positive 3. And I'm left with x minus 4 once I do that. Now I see that there's an x minus 4 and an x minus 4. So I'm going to factor that out. And I'm left with x minus 4 plus 3. Now I can simplify negative 4 plus 3. So my answer, x minus 4 times x minus 1. So it's a little bit tricky because of how it looks, but it's the same idea where you're factoring out something that they have in common. Okay? So what I'd like you to do is to try each of these on your own. We have one problem where you're dealing with a binomial that's squared, and then we have another problem where you're dealing with multiple variables. Good luck!